Um, and not diagnosis specific in the sense that depressed mood can be a symptom of many different diagnoses. If any domain, any of these domains is rated clinically significant above a certain threshold, uh, then the patient would complete some additional self-report uh, questions to get a little bit more detail on that domain. And for uh, the, the uh, NIMH has developed the PROMISE measures, uh, fairly simple self-report uh, measures that are available for some of these domains. And the thinking is to use uh, those, to use the PROMISE where, uh, for the domains for which it's available. We also are, uh, the thinking is to have some disorder-specific severity measures. So this is before any diagnosis is made to assess these clinically important dimensions. And then once a disorder is diagnosed, to have self-report measures that are specific to that diagnosis to get a sense of the severity. Because we all know a disorder isn't just absent or present. And, and DSM so far has been very categorical. You have it or you don't. But we know that there's a spectrum of, of severity, and many of us use measures anyway in our clinical practice. So the idea is to add some disorder-specific severity measures and some type of very simple global clinician-rated severity measure as well. Again, to try and track change over time as patients go perhaps from severe to mild symptoms to subclinical symptoms. I thought I'd say a bit about the personality disorders because the, when it comes to a specific set of disorders, I think the use of dimensions is probably, it's a big change for the personality disorders, probably more so than other disorders, and it's a rather novel use of dimensions, I think. So the personality disorder uh, work group's current proposal is to have five personality disorder types. So they are keeping the categories. Uh, so there would be an antisocial, avoidant, borderline, obsessive, compulsive, and schizotypal. And then in addition, to have six broad, higher order, personality trait domains. And here they are in blue. Um, they're, they're based a, a fair amount on the, uh, the NEO five-factor model of personality, uh, although that model doesn't represent compulsivity that well. Compulsivity was sort of added and broadened, and it doesn't reflect schizotypy very well, um, and that was added. Um, and each of these uh, domains is then characterized by several lower order, more specific trait facets. So for negative emotionality, you would have these look kind of neo-like. Uh, you'd have more specificity of these traits. And the rationale for using these trait profiles is the huge amount of comorbidity and the huge amount of NOS diagnoses in the personality disorders. I think uh, the field has felt it's a real problem, that somehow we're not capturing a lot of personality problems. If, if the most common diagnosis is NOS, what is that exactly? And so I think the idea is to be more pr precise here and rate, uh, you know, do have these dimensional, use these dimensional ratings of personality traits. Um, and so, and also within a diagnosis, within any one of these categories, like borderline, you know, you can have, there's a lot of heterogeneity among different borderline patients. And so the idea is by specifying some of these additional traits dimensionally, um, you know, you can sort of specify the patient's problems a little bit better. And that may have, be useful for treatment. May increase diagnostic stability. Traits tend to be more stable than diagnoses. It acknowledges the continuous nature of personality and personality uh, disorders. And you can provide, you know, generate a personality trait profile for any patient, not just those with a personality disorder, and may improve validity of personality disorder assessment. So I think if we were to think in terms of disorders, the personality disorders is the group of disorders for which dimensions are being sort of most radically incorporated or incorporated in a most novel way. Um, schizophrenia. Is uh, that work group is planning to add the following dimension? This is a fairly major change as well. So, in addition to the diagnostic criteria, to rate these different dimensions. Again, I think the thinking is there's a lot of heterogeneity within the diagnostic category of schizophrenia. It's a big category. Patients meaningfully differ um, in in these ways. And the idea again is if you maybe use a simple zero to four point scale and rate each patient's symptoms. Um, on these uh, dimensions, and that that will better characterize the patient's presentation and potentially be useful for treatment. 
And I mentioned adding uh, these spe specifiers to uh, OCD, BDD. So this is an example of dimensions, you know, in addition to uh, within diagnostic uh, criteria for specific disorders. So I think you can see dimensions are being added in a variety of ways to DSM-4, and they're pretty much absent uh, to DSM-5. They're pretty much absent from DSM-4. Some proposals to enhance developmental sensitivity. There's been a lot of thinking about this. Uh, how to make our diagnoses more sensitive to developmental processes and manifestations. Um, and so developmental manifestations will be included in some criteria sets where relevant, where we feel the criteria need to be modified a little bit for children and adolescents. Uh, the proposal is to have a, a separate new diagnostic criteria set for PTSD in preschool children. Uh, there's been a lot of work in this area, and it's felt that the criteria for adults just really um, aren't quite what the field needs and what patients need, and to increase the focus on developmental considerations in the text to say a fair amount more about that. There's a lot of emphasis on cult enhancing cultural sensitivity. I mentioned one of the uh, study groups is focusing on culture. And the idea is to just say a lot more about it in DSM-5 and make it more prominent because it is very important when we work with patients to understand cultural aspects of psychiatric diagnosis. So the idea is not to just stick it in the, in the back of the manual where you know, maybe you haven't even seen it, uh, but to put it in the front, that's the proposal, and to really expand it and make it much more useful and update it. And we have fantastic experts in this area. One of my work group members, uh, Roberto Luis Fernandez and others, really have tremendous expertise in this area. They're making a great contribution to the whole process. Um, and, and the idea is just to be helpful to clinicians about uh, cultural issues to consider when working with patients. Revise, you know, we've been thinking a lot about how to enhance the cultural sensitivity of specific diagnostic criteria, which is a, it's a big challenge. One example um, is to add fear of offending others to social anxiety disorder. Um, to reflect the Japanese conceptualization of social anxiety disorder, Taijin Kiyofusho, where um, you know, the fear is not just on embarrassing oneself, but offending others by looking anxious. Um, uh, a lot of concern about you know, not upsetting other people. Uh, it's a cultural difference, and so um, we feel this is very useful and valid perspective, and um, so the little bit of, you know, a little phrase about offending others has been added to social anxiety disorder. And then the text has a section on specific culture, age, and gender features, and of course that will be updated and I hope expanded. And then finally, the metastructure, uh, how disorders are organized. Um, the overall organization of DSM-5 has not been decided yet, and it will be determined in collaboration with WHO. It's very much a collaborative effort. My work group has proposed a grouping of obsessive compulsive spectrum disorders. Uh, that's based on empirical evidence that these disorders are related to one another as well as clinical utility considerations. And disorders from, uh, would come from all over DSM. Uh, they're currently scattered in different areas of DSM. And this concept, the OC spectrum disorder concept, has been around for several decades. Uh, that research planning conference did a lot of literature reviews, had a lot of discussion and proposed addition of this grouping of disorders, which would be new for DSM. And our work group has come to a similar conclusion. We've written, published several literature reviews on this concept, looking at many external validators on the relatedness of these disorders to one another, also considering clinical utility. Is it useful to have a grouping of disorders like this for assessment purposes, measurement purposes, treatment purposes? Um, the proposal is to have it be fairly narrow in terms of what disorders it would include. I think some past conceptualizations of the OC spectrum have been very broad, including a lot of impulse control disorders and, you know, even borderline personality disorder and depersonalization disorder. This is a much broad, narrower conceptualization. Uh, so it would be BDD and, and trichotillomania, uh, perhaps uh, tics and stereotypic movement disorder. Um, OCD um, hoarding if it goes into um, the main part of the manual. Um, we're also proposing a grouping of trauma, uh, stress and trauma-related disorders. Um, 
And uh, the proposal, so, you know, PTSD is currently an anxiety disorder, uh, as is acute stress disorder, adjustment disorder, and DSM-4 is its own separate section. Dissociative disorders are on their own separate section. Uh, but the thinking is that these are all stress trauma-related disorders. Of course, many disorders are. So this has been a big focus of discussion. Uh, pros and cons of having a separate section for these disorders when, for example, something like major depressive disorder can, you know, be perhaps triggered by stress or stress ca is a risk factor, uh, it can be a risk factor. So there's been a lot of discussion, but I think the, the thinking is on balance that there is utility to highlighting the requirement, um, certainly for these, these group, these disorders here, the requirement and necessity of um, a stressful traumatic uh, event for the onset of these disorders. Of course, in combination with other risk factors like genetic risk factors. So it's not meant to imply that, you know, there, are other, there aren't other uh, 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 risk factors for these disorders. I think one of these two groups will probably be in the same chapter as anxiety disorders. There's only a limited number of chapters that can be in DSM-5. And so there are arguments both ways, you know, that there's a relationship certainly between PTSD and acute stress disorder. Uh, and the anxiety disorders, and between OCD and VDD and some of the anxiety disorders. So it, I think w it's still a little bit unclear um, how that will, um, uh, you know, what the final recommendation will be. And of course, any proposals for how DSM chapters should be organized has to take into account all the other chapters. Uh, so uh, this, you know, I think all of these proposals currently, um, you know, are just initial proposals. And we have to consider the overall structure and how all, it's a big puzzle. How are all the disorders going to fit together in 10 chapters? And um, again, the, the international WHO perspective is critically important here. So the field has advanced substantially since the early 1990s when DSM-4 was developed. And certainly in reviewing the literature, it's clear there's time, it's time for change. The goal of change is, are, is to enhance the reliability, the validity, and the clinical utility of DSM for patients, for clinicians, for researchers. Uh, it's a very evidence-based process. It's still ongoing. And we really do welcome input on proposed changes because we still have a ways to go. It's not done yet. So happy to take uh, some questions and have some discussion. And here's some input if you have some ideas and suggestions. Mm -hmm.